All right, so good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Brainy Boomer Lecture Series. We're so very happy that you've joined us today. In 2007, the McGill University Research Center for Studies in Aging, or the MCSA's Education Committee, started the Brainy Boomer Lecture Series in order to suggest practical steps to both improve and maintain brain health, as well as to promote healthy lifestyle choices among the most populous generation in history. The MCSA Education Committee, which was founded in 1996, has three main objectives. Identifying education needs of healthcare providers, seniors, caregivers, and the public, and to develop responses to meet some of those needs. Enhancing the positive image of the aging process by addressing stereotypes and myths about aging. And finally, the dissemination of research on aging. Yufei Zan is a clinical dietitian at the Jewish General Hospital. Zan worked with a variety of patient populations with both acute and or chronic medical conditions. Zan had previously acquired a clinical experience in geriatrics, surgery, and critical care at Lachine Hospital in Montreal General Hospital. Zan has also participated in various health promotion events, providing presentations and hosting nutrition kiosks uh, at several elementaries and high schools. Zan is enthusiastic about promoting healthy dietary habits and lifestyle choices, and is eager to share his passion and knowledge about nutrition. Before continuing, we would just like to remind you to please mute your microphone on Zoom, and that if you have any questions, please wait until the end of the conference, or you could write them down in the chat box on Zoom. And now I'd like to invite Yufei Zan to start his presentation, Healthy Eating, Your Food Guide Towards Successful Aging. So hello, everyone, and thank you very much for partaking in this event. And thank you very much, Kaylin, for your introduction. Uh, my name is Yufei. I'm a clinical dietitian at the Jewish General Hospital. Well, currently I'm primarily working with uh, patients who are hospitalized with stroke or neurosurgery. So today I'm here to talk about nutrition and healthy eating in general, uh, which is especially important in this current time with the quarantines. So before we begin, I just want to say that we had a cyber attack four weeks ago. Uh, so there might be some problem with the internet from my end. Uh, it wasn't an issue last week, so we should be fine. Uh, but in case of any inter, uh, interruptions, please note it down and I'll clarify in the question periods after the presentation. So why does healthy eating matters? Um, well, eating is a big part of our daily life. Having a healthy and balanced diet is uh, very important as it promotes health, uh, well-being and ensures successful aging. We can obtain energy and essential nutrients adequately in order to prevent and reduce our risk of chronic diseases such as uh, heart disease, hypertension, and diabetes, uh, while eating adequately also prevents um, muscle and bone loss, which become more and more pronounced as we age. It can also help strengthen our body and our immune system. So today, uh, I will primarily talk about the Canada's Food Guide, which was published in January last year. Uh, we will also talk a little bit about how to adjust our diet during the pandemic, and especially how to create a positive eating environment. So this is the Canada's Food Guide. Uh, you, as you can see, it is divided into two parts. So the first part on the left uh, contains a plate with a diverse collection of different food groups, uh, which represents a, a healthy, balanced food composition in the meal. Uh, there's also a cup of water, which, which represents uh, the, our beverage of choice. Uh, the second part contains some tips and recommendations on how to optimize our experience while we're eating. So for today, we will focus mainly on the first part. So the uh, the food composition part. So uh, as I mentioned, this is the plate uh, that's representing the ideal composition of each meal, uh, not necessarily the, 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 the amount. So here we can see on the left, uh, the half of the plate is filled with different colorful fruits and vegetables. Uh, one quarter of the plate on the top uh, with protein foods and the other quarter was whole grain foods. We'll dive a little deeper into each one. So we'll begin with the largest section of the plate, the fruits and vegetables. So here we can see broccolis, 
carrots, uh, berries, apples, uh, pepper, tomatoes, green leafy vegetables, uh, you name it. Uh, we are encouraged to eat a, a big variety of fruits and vegetables every day, uh, if not at every meal. So fruits and vegetables are especially beneficial due to their high content of fiber, of vitamins and minerals. Uh, vitamins and minerals are utilized by our body every day at every moment for many functions uh, from simple metabolism, uh, digestion to strengthening our immune system. Uh, many such as vitamin C, uh, vitamin E also have these antioxidative properties. Let's talk, to, uh, talk about fiber. Um, so fiber can be protective against many diseases. Uh, they are found primarily in the skin of uh, fruits and vegetables, especially the harder ones. Uh, they, are often, they often have this hard, fibrous, uh, crisp, crunchy, and also chewy texture that may be very interesting to eat uh, or to add in your food in general. So having an adequate amount of fiber in the, fi uh, in the diet can lower the, blood, uh, the level of blood cholesterol improve blood lipid profile, and allow a stable control of blood sugar. So some dietary fiber can facilitate food's transit uh, in the bowel, allowing regular bowel movements and prevent constipation as well. So overall, uh, consuming foods that are high in dietary fiber can lower the risk of stroke, colon cancer, heart disease, and diabetes. And at the same time, if you're having some difficulties getting fresh fruits and vegetables, uh, maybe they are too expensive or they're not available in the market, then, or they are not in season uh, as the, uh, the winter is coming, uh, you, then you can always consider frozen and canned options. Uh, so all, uh, sometimes people have this stigma that, uh, well, frozen or canned fruits and vegetables are not as healthy or they have not as much nutrients, uh, which is not really true. So fresh frozen and canned fruits are uh, fruits and vegetables. They are all very healthy. Um, they, they have similar nutrient, uh, nutrient um, and sometimes frozen and canned options are easier to prepare because they are already pre-prepared. They have been cut or diced already. So you can just add in your food whenever you're, you're cooking. Um, so, and also currently I would say the biggest advantage uh, of the canned and frozen options uh, is that they have a much longer shelf life. Uh, so you can buy them in bulk or whenever you're going, you're going to, uh, grocery shopping. Uh, so they, you can store them uh, in your fridge or you know, just on your shelf and they can last you the whole winter without worrying. Uh, and that way you can also go to go grocery shopping less often uh, to just to avoid the exposure. Now, they, there are many quick ways and easy ways uh, as well to increase your fruits and vegetable intake. So adding fruits and vegetables to your foods uh, can, uh, can add this artistic accent to the aesthetic of your meal. Uh, because they are so colorful, they come in in different uh, shapes as well. Uh, they also add a lot of taste and textures. So they can be very interesting to eat. Um, so you can add fruits in your cereal, uh, in your yogurt as a snack or dessert. Uh, you can dip slices of or pieces of fresh fruits and vegetables such as banana, apple, uh, cucumbers, carrots, uh, celery into nut butter or, or hummus. Um, or you can simply enjoy them uh, raw on their own as a healthy snack uh, or in salads uh, in between meals whenever you feel like eating something. So they are very healthy. You can also buy frozen fruits or you can just simply freeze your fruits uh, in your refrigerator and eat them as a icy refreshing snack or, or dessert. Um, and whenever you are making a sandwich or a hamburger, you can always try to add a, one more slice of tomato, avocado, onion, pepper, or cucumber uh, as you, well, you can also experience with, uh, 
experiment with all different kind of stuff as well. So now let's look at the uh, the whole grain foods. So these foods mainly contain starch, which provides a large portion of our daily energy intake. Uh, for example, here we see uh, bread, cereal, rice, and pasta. So similar to fruits and vegetables, whole grain foods also contain a lot of fiber, vitamins and minerals as well, which are beneficial to our body as we discussed earlier. And they also contain carbohydrate. So carbohydrate is the main nutrition content of uh, starches. Uh, they provide the bulk of our daily energy as we, uh, as we previously said. And our brain mainly uses uh, carbohydrates as a fuel. So there are many grain products in the, uh, in the market. However, uh, not all the starches are made with whole grain. Uh, let's take bread here as an, a prime example. Uh, here we have white bread, whole wheat bread, and whole grain bread. So which ones are the best, um, have the best nutrition content? Well, it can be very uh, confusing when, when we're choosing, uh, when, when, whenever we're going grocery shopping. So, Let's examine uh, the, ana uh, the anatomy of a grain more closely. So there are three main components in a grain. Uh, we have the brain, the germ, and the endosperm. So the brain, brain uh, is the outer layer, uh, the hard shell of uh, the, the hard shell of the grain. Uh, it contains the most. Uh, it contains most of the fiber, um, and also the brain and the germ. Uh, have most of the uh, vitamins and minerals as well. Uh, while the endosperm here only contain carbohydrate, um, well, give or take. Uh, whole grain, so here, whole grain products contain all three parts of the grain. Uh, while refined grain products, for, for example, the white bread, uh, white pasta, white flour, um, contain only the endosperm. So that's why they are called uh, they are called refined because they are uh, the indos uh, the germ and the brand are all removed. Uh, so um, yeah, so um, here, so as we uh, let's go back to the bread example, which ones are the uh, the best? Well, obviously the whole uh, the whole wheat bread and whole, the whole grain bread. Are, are better than the white bread because they contain all three parts of the grain. Uh, they contain more significantly more um, uh, vitamins and minerals and also fiber. And the only distinction between whole wheat and whole grain is that well, whole wheat bread is made with the uh, the grain of wheat, while whole grain bread are can can contain different uh, grains other than the wheat on its own. Again, so there are ways to incorporate more whole grain foods into our meals and snacks. Now, first of all, if you, you prefer to have refined grain products, for example, you just like uh, white bread or white flour, uh, maybe you can try replace uh, half of your grain products for um, whole grain or whole wheats. Uh, for example, if you like baking, mix half refined flour and half whole wheat flour together to bake whatever you're, you, want to, uh, you want to make. Or whenever you're eating two slices of toast, have one slice of white bread and the other, uh, other slice with whole wheat or whole grain bread. So that way you can have a little bit more whole grain and whole wheat foods. Uh, you can add cooked wheat, uh, brown rice, barley in your soup. Uh, you can also add oats to your yogurt or cereal. There are a lot of interesting ways that you can explore in order to add more uh, whole grain foods uh, in your diet. And now let's look at uh, protein foods. So sometimes uh, when, I, when I'm interacting with the patient, I hear a lot of my older patients telling me uh, that they are cutting more and more protein as they age. However, it is very important to have adequate protein intake especially with age. Well, as we 
age past the age of 50, we start losing more and more muscle and bone uh, mass, if, especially if we stay inactive uh, physically. So significant muscle loss can lead to sarcopenia, which means reduced uh, reserve of muscle. Um, the, it is the major cause of frailty during um, in the uh, elderly uh, population. And, um, and, uh, and you can also increase the risk of fall, falls because uh, we have less strength. And, it's, it, uh, it's, and whenever that happens, uh, we can have bone fracture. Uh, and it's very difficult to fully recover from that, especially uh, with age. So protein can pr promote muscle growth, uh, preserve muscle mass uh, when combining with some physical activities. Uh, in consequence, it, it can decrease the, uh, the risk of frailty and falls uh, by improving our body strength and endurance. So protein also play a big role in our immune system. So eating more protein combining with uh, vitamins and minerals can improve our body's competence against illness and infections, which is especially important during this time of the year. There are two different types of protein that you can enjoy. Uh, so the first one is the more traditional, uh, what we consider more traditional protein sources, uh, the animal proteins, for example, poultry, meat, fish, egg, milk, cheese, and also uh, they're all great um, sources of protein. While you can also choose plant-based proteins, uh, may, namely uh, peas, legumes, lentils, soybeans, or soy products such as tofu or soy beverage seeds and nuts. So they are all excellences, uh, excellent options for protein intake. Now we're encouraged to incorporate more plant, uh, plant protein foods into our diet. Uh, they, are, they also have many advantages such as having higher, such as they are higher in fiber, uh, vitamin and minerals. They are lower in saturated fat and have no cholesterol at all. Uh, they can decrease our risk of heart disease in the meantime. Uh, they also are quite cheap comparing to the animal protein sources. Uh, and they are also more environmental friendly. So you can try and discover more plant protein foods on top of eating uh, the animal proteins. Again, here are just some tips on how to increase your protein intake and they are quite easy as well. So you can add legumes such as beans, peas, lentils. You can also add uh, tofus in salads or soups or pasta. Uh, you can add canned fish and eggs in there too. Um, you can have seeds and nuts or dairy products such as cheese as snacks. Uh, you can also add seeds and nuts in, in muffins or, or your bakeries, uh, in salads or desserts as well. So you can add it every, anywhere and everywhere. And, and absolutely, there, there are a million ways that you can explore on your own. Uh, as I just mentioned, dairy products uh, are also included in the, uh, the protein food groups. A uh, couple of examples would be milk, yogurt, cheese, and some alternatives are uh, soy beverages. Uh, they are all uh, excellent sources of protein, but in the same, at the same time, they also contain uh, calcium and vitamin D. So having an adequate calcium and vitamin D is essential for uh, preserving bone mass, decreasing the risk of osteoporosis and bone fracture. Uh, it is recommended to have uh, regular uh, vitamin D supplement consumption on a daily basis. Uh, especially as we're living in Canada. And um, as we age, our body simply make, doesn't make enough vitamin D in the day to, uh, to supply our bones. And during the winter time, we don't have as much sunshine and our body simply won't be able to sustain the, uh, the vitamin D production. So um, make sure you're consuming vitamin D uh, regularly. And as I previously mentioned, another big fact, uh, factor in preventing muscle and bone loss is staying physically active. 
Uh, there are many little activities that you can do to keep you at, uh, physically active and let you enjoy being uh, enjoy your daily life as well. So we call them um, joyful movements. So you can enjoy a walk after eating, uh, dancing while doing houseworks such as cleaning or uh, doing the dishes or uh, or cooking. You can take stairs instead of the elevators uh, as you tolerate, of course, where you can do gardening. Uh, I know that the, uh, some of these activities can be a little bit more um, tricky, especially during the winter time uh, and also during quarantine as well. Uh, but just try to move your body a little more, no matter what you're doing. Um, now let's talk about, uh, about beverages. So of course we want to make water our drink of choice. So we, our body loses fluids uh, through breathing, sweating, urinating, and most importantly, uh, it's, very, it's very important to stay hydrated. Uh, as we age, we often don't feel uh, the thirst as often, uh, and it can be very easy to be dehydrated before feeling thirsty. Uh, it is important to drink regularly, even if we don't feel thirsty. And uh, so for that, you can set an alarm to remind you to drink where you can also keep a jar, a pitcher uh, of water uh, in your fridge or on your countertop. Uh, so, so you can see them, they are more accessible. Uh, You're reminded uh, every moment to, to, to drink water. Uh, other healthy beverages could be unsweetened coffee or tea, uh, carbonated water, low fat milk or uh, unsweetened soy beverages or low sodium soups. So basically any beverage uh, or any liquid that contain low amount of sugar or sodium or salt. And you can also add fruits and fresh herbs such as mint in your water without adding sugar just to make your water taste more interesting. And there's uh, again, a bunch of th different things that you can experiment. So a word on salt. Uh, we, eat, we simply eat too much salt on a daily basis. Uh, having too much salt or sodium in particular uh, could increase our risk of hypertension and heart disease. So I would encourage everyone to try to cook with less salt, avoid using salt shakers uh, in your meals, and uh, try to add more spices such as pepper or herbs uh, in foods to make them more uh, tasteful or flavorful without necessarily using more salt. Now let's talk a little bit about healthy eating during pandemic. So first of all, there is no specific food or diet that is uh, scientifically proven to prevent or treat the coronavirus, unfortunately. So we are simply encouraged to follow a well-balanced healthy diet as we just talked about for, uh, until now um, to optimize our health and immune, in, and immune system. So continue to follow uh, public health uh, guidelines such as washing your hands, continue uh, social distancing, uh, avoid exposure and crowded area, um, and most of all, create a positive eating environment at home. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. So we are often distracted or preoccupied by other things while we are eating. So we, we don't re usually appreciate our food uh, during, during meals. Uh, sometimes it feels just like another chore to do. So during the quarantine, uh, it is very, it's, it's also very eat uh, just to cope with emotions or simply to kill time because we're too bored and there's nothing to do. And uh, there are very, a lot of stories uh, that people have gained, you know, 20, 30 pounds to, uh, since March, the, uh, the start of the pandemic. And, um, and that's usually why, uh, because we're just not conscious enough whenever we are eating. So it's very important to enjoy your food while, while, while you're eating. Uh, have a dedicated dining area and time period for all your meals. Uh, take your time to eat and avoid distractions such as watching TV or reading books. Uh, you can decorate your dining area to your to your liking. 
and to pull on your, uh, put your uh, favorite music in the background while you're at it. That's just to give it a little bit more ambiance, uh, try to make eating foods a little bit more fun. Uh, I know that before we also encourage people to eat with others, which is less ideal during the time of uh, pandemic. But what you can do is always, you can, you can FaceTime or, or make a Zoom call to some, uh, someone else, to a friend or to a family member and simply share your meal that way and talk about things uh, during meal time and have a good, a good time that way. So to sum it up, um, to have a healthy diet, it is important to have a variety of foods, uh, stay hydrated with water and enjoy your foods while you're eating. So here I wish everyone to stay healthy and stay happy uh, despite in the current difficult time and uh, the different, uh, difficult year that we're, we're being, uh, going through. And uh, thank you very much for listening and uh, we can pass to question periods. Thank you. Thank you so much for that fantastic presentation. Um, we do have a question here. Someone would like to know, uh, what are the risks of too much soy in our diet and can you define what is too much? Well, um, it's difficult to say. I mean, soy on its own, soy are good um, sources of protein, but at the same time, sometimes there are studies showing that they are also pro-inflammatory. Uh, there's no uh, specific guideline on how much soy that we should eat. And um, I would say for, as for every, uh, every food in the world, uh, there's nothing that you should cut or avoid completely. And there's not also, it's, everything should be in moderate amount. Uh, you should not just, if you're thinking eating more soy products and just eat soy every meal and, every, and go overboard with it, uh, definitely. So, so eating not, not enough and both, eat, well, both eating not enough and eating too much are, uh, are bad for our health. So eating everything in moderation and, uh, um, and it also depends on the amount and the frequency as well. Uh, so I can't really answer that question, um, unfortunately, regarding how much soy we should eat in a day because there's not such a guideline. Okay. Uh, so we have another question uh, down in the chat box. It mm -hmm. said uh, it was not mentioned how much of each uh, varieties of each food. And then a follow-up question also, what about if you would like to lose weight? Okay. So uh, yeah, I see them here. Uh, the variety of foods. So there's, um, I would say there's no, as again, there's no uh, defined guidelines on how many different fruits and vegetables that you should eat. You should simply enjoy, you know, uh, all different kinds of things, exploit, um, explore different um, new foods that you simply uh, don't eat before. Uh, try new things and just to make sure that uh, your meals are not very repetitive, repetitive on a daily basis. For example, today I eat, uh, I don't know, uh, um, let's say cabbage for, uh, for vegetable and it's just cabbage for every single meal and every, on every single day. So just mix it, mix things up and uh, enjoy your meal. Um, and also if you're if you prefer some uh, foods in particular, you can enjoy them more often. Uh, and if you don't like something, it doesn't mean that you, you should still try to eat them as well and try to incorporate in your diet. Um, so again, everything should be in moderation and to your liking and just enjoy different kinds of foods. Uh, what about uh, weight loss? Uh, it depends, it depends on the individual. Um, it's, well, as we age, especially past the age of uh, 75, it's very, we do not necessarily encourage people to lose weight um, because when we're losing weight at the, at the higher age, we're losing, we're losing a lot of muscle and we're not necessarily uh, losing a lot of fat. 
And uh, when we're losing muscle, uh, as I mentioned in my uh, presentation, it's very uh, difficult to regain the muscle, muscle mass and the bone mass as well. So, so my um, advice for usually for my elderly patient is to uh, maintain their body weight as much as possible without necessarily losing or gaining weight. What about calcium supplements? Some time ago, there was a study saying that they may have a negative if, uh, effect on the heart. So how much should we take a day? Uh, once again, uh, every, everyone is different. Um, some people may not necessarily need calcium uh, supplements. And uh, I would say for this question, talk to, uh, your, to, talk to your doctor or talk to a dietitian um, for specifically for you, uh, because if people have different uh, conditions at baseline and uh, everyone is, is uh, different. Uh, is there any food product that cause bloating more than other foods? Well, it depends on the individual as well. Some people can eat everything and anything without any uh, gastrointestinal uh, symptoms, while some people have, you know, uh, lactose intolerance, so they their stomach become more gassy after drinking milk, or some people have problem with uh, pulses, uh, lentils, and legumes. Uh, so. It depends on the individual. I would say try different things just to see if uh, you know um, you have some of the symptoms after eating, so you know your body uh, how your body reacts to different foods. Um, so, but for sure, uh, we see a lot of people re uh, having more uh, more bloating sensation, especially with legumes uh, when they, with milk when they're lactose intolerant. Were also, and also with tomatoes and cabbage, uh, cabbage and, and broccoli, things like that. Uh, one thing you can do uh, when, when you're having some uh, bloating problems, you can, um, well, you can boil or simmer your, your fruits, uh, your, your, your food, uh, especially the vegetables, uh, the pulses that I mentioned, so that you can, um, Take out some of the uh, the oligosaccharide that's main uh, that mainly causes uh, bloating in some of the individuals. Perfect. Are there any other questions? Just wait a minute. All right. Uh, well, thank you so much again for this fantastic presentation. The MCSA Education Committee would like to thank you and everybody who came in uh, today for the presentation. Um, as usual, we put all of our links down in the chat box to our Eventbrite page as we've added some new dates for December and for January as well. Um, we also have the link for a brief survey. We'd love to have any feedback about today's event or any other event that you've attended. Um, and we have our YouTube link in the chat box as well in case you've missed an event and would like to uh, watch it or you want to go back and watch an event you've attended and get some more information. Uh, so again, thank you so much and have a great day, everyone.